Welcome to the Creative Insight. I'm your host, Murat Gavanch from Across Inc. Every week, we bring industry practitioners, subject matter experts, and technology evangelists to have a quick chat on industry trends and emerging technologies. Our guest today is Hemang Dave, CTO of Kinderly. Hi, Hemang. Nice seeing you in our show. Murat, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the invite. Hemang, you are a practitioner of innovation. You have published several articles and blogs worldwide, including on the topic of AI, which has become widespread over the last decade. Can AI accelerate innovation and how? I'm absolutely convinced that AI will help us drive innovation to an unprecedented level. But before we dive into that, let's just take a step back and understand the evolution of AI. How, how did all these things come about? So if we look at a contemporary view, right around 1960s, we see that computer scientists start thinking about artificial intelligence. But even if we zoom out from that perspective, even earlier civilizations like Greeks and the Hindus were kind of fascinating with the, the concept of AI. So from a humanities perspective, AI is nothing new. It's been around for such a long time. But now coming back to contemporary times, um, we start seeing the trends in 1960s, but we start seeing a bit more of a concrete applications of AI starting around like um, mid 1990s where IBM's Deep Blue played chess against human world champion at that point in time, Gary Koshpro, and was able to defeat Gary Koshpro. So that's kind of a concrete example of AI's application. But once you go beyond that, you will see that various other technology um, companies, Facebook, A Amazon, Google, various other companies, they have come up with their AI as well. And it has started to accelerate quite a bit. Uh, as we move forward from Deep Blue, you also have seen IBM Watson, which played Jeopardy. But then also more recently, about 2016, 2017 timeframe, Google's DeepMind also played a very ancient game, which is called Go, which is a bit more complicated than chess or playing Jeopardy. And DeepMind was able to defeat human champions as well. So we see that all this evolution starting to come together and accelerate trends within AI, but also how it starts getting applied into various other areas. As AI was evolving in early 2010s, it was really more of a single domain AI, meaning that you know very specifically focused tasks which get done with AI. But now we're seeing that you know AI go from single domain into multiple domain type of things. Um, and besides all these technology companies, there are various other open source technologies out there. For example, Elasticsearch they also contribute very heavily into advancements of AI and machine learning. Having said that, um, these things are moving from single domain to multi-domain, as I stated earlier. And then eventually, industry experts predict that around 2050, we will see AI to be like a human equivalent. Well, when we say that, what do we really mean by human equivalent? So let me give you an example. I'm sure you're familiar with um, Captain Sully, uh, who had an issue with his aircraft as he was taking off. Uh, birds struck his engines and uh, made the aircraft uh, pretty much uh, inoperable. And he was able to land that aircraft safely into Hudson River. And roughly about 135 people were saved their lives. As you see that, you know, Sully knew, Captain Sully knew that how to take off an aircraft, how to land an aircraft. Um, how to fly an aircraft, but he never knew how to land an aircraft in a body of water. But within 10 seconds, he was able to cobble up all his previous experiences and be able to make that decision by looking at various data points and was able to successfully land an aircraft. That's what human capability is all about. And AI will have that level of capability around 2050, according to many industry experts. But in my mind, I think this time frame would be around 2035 when AI will have human-like capability because it's continuing to accelerate how it's advancing, 
as well as various levels of applications which are being made from autonomous driving to various other things. And we all know as recent as the pandemic of COVID-19, pharmaceutical companies were successfully using AI and machine learning to formulate their vaccinations and come up with appropriate vaccines for humans. And without AI and ML, they would not have been able to do that. It would have taken two, three, four years before a good vaccine would come along. But AI and machine learning were able to help us drive that level of innovation. So Murat, strictly speaking and simply speaking, yes, innovation will help us drive, I mean, sorry, AI will drive innovation to an unprecedented level and we will see far impact into human lives. Right. AI and specifically computer vision are making great process uh, in the in the manufacturing sector. And I read your article on that one. So how AI based uh, systems can enhance the safety of workforce, even consumers or can help the humanity? Oh, absolutely. So many of our clients are already working with us on creating and implementing many of these use cases. So let me give you few of those examples. So working with a chemical manufacturer, obviously they produce some hazardous chemicals and we don't want humans to be around. So while in the assembly line and the manufacturing process, when these chemicals are placed into bottles and the caps are put on these bottles, in the past, humans used to inspect them. Now we have, you know, with the advancement in um, ultra high def camera technology, we can just use that and AI combined and we ensure that the caps which are put on properly so that uh, humans don't have to inspect them. And once they are packed, you know, place them in the boxes properly. And if there is any kind of leakage, uh, we can immediately detect that. Also, in this manufacturing facility, humans are allowed to go only into certain parts of the uh, facility because you don't want to get them exposed to these chemicals. So by mistake, if humans venture into these restricted areas, not only it alerts humans in real time saying that, you know, this is not the place where you want to be, but it also alerts a uh, plant manager. So it has multiple ways of knowing so that we can make sure that we don't put a human, a worker in harm's way. But we are also exploring other areas when we are transporting this kind of material, either in a truck or trains, whatever, we may be able to do various level of IoT and or with uh, computer vision and ensure that you know, during the transportation, um, it does not spill or humans don't come into contact with that. There is another example where we are working with a, a company which does metal recycling. And we do use visual AI along with uh, 5G uh, private wireless networks to deploy various um, cameras across this dumping facility where trucks bring in um, metal materials for recycling. And this visual equipment cameras and various other sensors detect what kind of metal it is, you know, because you don't want to have contamination. So for example, you don't want to have plastic with metal or dirt and various other contamination into that metal. So it has the ability to understand some of that. We also make sure that, you know, we understand the, the, the routes which trucks take inside this dumping facility. Uh, along with that, um, capturing of this um, visual elements, we ensure that the right level of people are coming into these dump dumping facilities as well. In the past, majority of this work was done by humans. They will take pictures, then they walk back to area where they will get a Wi-Fi coverage, and then they will upload all this information from their smart devices to the servers, etc. And then it will go and process. By doing many of these things with visualization as well as AI, we have reduced truck turnaround time from four, four and a half hours down to 20 minutes. With a third client, uh, which are um, manufacturer of appliances, and we are helping them embedding IoT into their appliances, along with their manufacturing facilities with use of visual AI, we are helping them produce digital twins. 
and that is also helping them from a manufacturing perspective as well. So there are quite a few examples and use cases which we are working through, and all of these things are possible with uh, good technology on the visual side, meaning the cameras, but then also AI and machine learning, which allow us to get the right level of information to the right stakeholder or personas, and then just move that forward. Yeah, th thanks for sharing those use cases. I'm really inspired to see how AI can be used in different areas. So my last question is, uh, innovation and automation are two core pillars for digital transformation. In your opinion, what is the role of machine learning to help companies automate? Absolutely. So it goes without saying that um, uh, innovation and automation are part of digital structure, right? Any kind of transformation. But AI, ML, along with automation, kind of are intertwined. So let's take a step back first. We're seeing huge amount of data proliferation and explosion because of IoT, industrial IoT, smart devices, apps with location awareness, 5G, various other things. We humans are just not capable to understand this type of data, meaning that you know the, the quantity is huge. We don't know different types of data types that are coming at us in a very fast manner. Uh, we don't know how to create patterns you know, as, as data is coming through, but also we don't know, you know which data is good, which data is not so useful, right? You know, so understanding that um, of, of the data types and the quality of data is of huge importance. So what AI and machine learning allows us to do, you know, through supervised and unsupervised learning, understand the various patterns which exist within this data, but also help us segregate good quality data and then, you know, leave out the digital exhaust as well as digital noise and be able to cipher through many of that thing. Now, once we get that level of um, clarity and sanity within the data, then what happens is that we are going to start seeing the patterns and actionable insights. Now, here's the issue. Again, a lot of data and then actionable insights can be real time or even near real time. And my favorite phrase is actionable insights are useless unless you act upon them. And in many cases, if they're real time, you need to act upon them right away. And at that point in time, automation kind of becomes a complementary factor, which allows AI and ML to continue functioning and be able to you know, provide meaningful insights, but then also create level of actions which go against that. And in many cases, we have infused AI and machine learning with automation so that automation is not static, uh, but also very dynamic, and but more importantly, be able to go against real-time and near real-time insights. All right. Thank you very much for your valuable time and sharing these insights. Uh, I really appreciate it. I look forward to talking to you on another show uh, and our collaboration. Murat, thank you very much for the invite. It's been my pleasure to be with you. Uh, but in um, closing, I would say this, innovation is absolutely crucial for humanity's survival. And if we take a famous example of Elon Musk, right, where he wants us to be a multi-planetary species, or some point in time in future, maybe we may venture out, out of our solar system or maybe our galaxy. None of this would be possible without innovation. AI, machine learning will play a critical role there will be lots of other technologies which we can't even comprehend at this point in time, which, which will come into existence, which will help us just be that, multi-planetary or multi-solar system species. And I tell you that, that's very exciting.